What's up everybody, Justin here to do my NXT TakeOver San Antonio review. The show just ended about five minutes ago and it was fucking glorious. It was glorious. That main event was insane. That main event was probably one of the best NXT world title matches I've ever seen. That, my god, that main event was fucking awesome. One of the best... NXT Championship matches I've seen in NXT history. So here we go with my review. The event was pretty damn good. The three title matches on the show were very good. Very entertaining. So here we go. Of course, I'll rate the best matches that I think later. First, I'm going to read my Twitter poll and try to refresh here and update it. Because I'm sure it got more votes. So here we go. Ret not retweet. Rate tonight's NXT TakeOver. NXT TakeOver San Antonio. Rate it. A plus B or C. 53% have given it a A plus. 40% gave it a B, and 7% gave it a C. I would say the main event, Nakamura, Bobby Roode, that was an A+. Just great storytelling, great emotion. Uh, that match had me hyped. I was hyped throughout the entire match. It was damn exciting, and it was good. So now 56%. Said the show was an A+. 36% gave it a B. And 6% said it was a C. I'd give the main event an A+. The rest of the show, I would give it a B. Very good show. So here we go. Up first. This is my review up first. The first match to kick off NXT TakeOver San Antonio was Ty Dillinger, the perfect 10. Ty Dillinger, hopefully we see that guy... Oh, hopefully we see him tomorrow in the Royal Rumble match because he needs to be in the Rumble match. He needs to be number 10 in the Rumble. That would get a huge pop and be damn exciting. So, by the way, tomorrow night I will be recording a live reaction to the Rumble and a Royal Rumble review. So the live reaction, that's going to be damn fun to watch the Rumble and record my live reaction. Because the entire match should be fun. So Ty Dillinger, I hope you're in the Rumble tomorrow night because you need to be. Ty Dillinger against Sanity's Eric Young. He came out with Sanity. I mean, such great theme music Sanity has. And their entrance is great with the spotlight going back and forth. That's awesome. Ty Dillinger also. He has a great entrance and... His theme music is also pretty damn cool. So I thought Ty Dillinger would win. I predicted Ty Dillinger. This was a pretty good match. I believe Sanity interfered. So Ty Dillinger did not win. Eric Young wins. Good for Eric Young. Happy he got a match at a takeover. He deserves it. Because the guy's been in the business a long time. Up next, the second match of the night. I apologize if you could hear me belch. I'm sorry, but that's what happens when you drink soda. The second match of the night was Roderick Strong against Adrande Elmas. Adrande CM Elmas. And Roderick Strong, they had a pretty damn good match. Uh, it was better than I expected. I thought it was very good. I predicted Adrande would win. He lost. But that's okay. Adrande looked pretty damn good in the match. Roderick Strong looked great. He did one spot where he hit a backbreaker on top of the turnbuckle. He just dropped him. That was pretty awesome. And it looked like it hurt like hell. And uh, Adrande Almas, most of the match, was working over Roderick Strong's arm and his shoulder. So that was good stuff. The match was good. Roderick Strong wins at his first ever takeover. Up next, we had the tag team title match on the line. The tag team titles, NXT tag team titles, the first 
title match of the night. DIY defending their tag titles against the Authors of Pain with their manager, the legendary Hall of Famer Paul Ellering. Authors of Pain, they are monsters. They're scary looking dudes. They look like they could, I mean, they would tear me apart. If I was in the ring with them, they would destroy me. So, tag team titles, DIY, Authors of Pain. This was very entertaining, very good. You had a lot of double team moves, a lot of counters, a lot of, well, they tried to uh, tap out the Authors of Pain, but that didn't work with a double cross face. I have some notes on the tag title match, so here we go. We had some running knees in the beginning. We did this paper flat so it doesn't make noise. We had some running knees in the beginning of the match. Running knees from DIY to the Authors of Pain. The Authors of Pain looked rocked like they were dazed and confused. Tommaso Ciampa hit a German suplex. He hit, I believe, two German suplexes on the Authors of Pain. That was insane that he lifted them and hit a German suplex on them. And DIY did a double team move from the outside of the ring apron. They jumped through the uh, top rope, or under the top rope. They did a double spear to one of the Authors of Pain. That was awesome. Double spear through the ropes. But that did not get the job done. Because the Authors of Pain would not lose and give up and let them finish them. Authors of Pain then hit a sit-out power but or that was a finish I believe. That was a finish. Or no, that wasn't a finish. During it, the Authors of Pain hit a double team move, sit-out power bomb, and a neck breaker at the same time. One, two, and somehow Tommaso Ciampa kicked out of that double neck breaker and sit-out power bomb. I don't know how the hell he kicked out of that, but he did. This match, as I said, the tag title match was damn good, damn exciting. Just like the main event was. Then the authors of Pain, somehow they took out uh, Johnny Gargano. He was taken out of the ring. But he came back in the ring. They had tried they had double super kicks. And they had a lot of double team moves. And they locked on a double cross face. Double cross face submission to the authors of pain. One of the authors of pain stood up and lifted Johnny Gargano. That was insane. Dude, he is a fucking beast to lift up Johnny like that. Off the mat and then he... The other Authors of Pain, I don't remember their names, and I don't really care what their names are. I just call them Authors of Pain. So then, Champa, he got the, uh, one of the Authors of Pain was holding Johnny, slammed him, I believe did a power slam on top of Tommaso Champa that broke up the crossface submission. So then, the Authors of Pain picked up both members, hit, went bam up against each other, back to back. They squish each other in the power bombs. That has to hurt. And G Gargano then was power bombed. He fell out of the ring, I believe. And then Tommaso Ciampa was put in their finisher, uh, Russian leg sweep clothesline. One, two, three. Authors of pain win. And I was happy as hell because I predicted the authors of pain would win. The titles nobody thought they would. But I did predict they would go back. Watch my NXT TakeOver San Antonio predictions. I predicted that the Authors of Pain would win the tag titles. I like DIY. They're a great team, but I wanted Authors of Pain to win. Mostly because I did bet on the match. $5 with a friend of mine. But not just because I bet on the match, but... I predicted Authors of Pain, so I was staying with them to win the tag titles, and they did. Very, very enjoyable tag title match. Up next, after that, I thought we were going to just get another match. But no, Seth Rollins appears. This was fucking awesome. Seth freaking Rollins appears. Gets in the ring, gets on the mic. The, the ring announcer looks shocked. The ref looks shocked. The crowd is shocked. They can't believe it. The crowd is going insane. They start chanting, holy shit, holy shit. Rollins on the mic. Says, Triple H, I know you're here. 
I know you're back there. Get your ass out here. Come out here right now and face me. I know you're back there. And Rollins is pissed. He wants his revenge. He wants Triple H right now at TakeOver San Antonio. Triple H comes out. He appears. He appears in the entrance, but he doesn't move. He doesn't try to walk to the ring. Instead, security is sent down to the ring. Rollins takes out security, takes out a couple of them. But then more security comes and they take away Seth Rollins. I guess he's in jail for the night. He's off to jail or he's kicked out of the arena. So then when Rollins is being taken away, he's yelling. He's yelling, let me go. I want you, Triple H. I want you, stuff like that. And the crowd is pissed. After Rollins is taken away, the crowd is chanting bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I agree, it was bullshit. But Triple H, NXT's his baby. The guy's not going to run to the ring and fight at a takeover. He, he did the right thing, but I would have loved to see Triple H and Rollins go at it and brawl. But it didn't happen tonight. It will happen probably after the Rumble on a Monday Night Raw. But I really want to see Triple H and Rollins go at it tonight. That would have been fucking awesome. So Rollins appears. The guy's a former, the guy's a first ever NXT champion. Former NXT champion Seth Rollins at an NXT takeover appearing. That was damn awesome to see. Um, next we had the women's Fatal Four Way. I think was up next. It was up next. Second title match of the night: NXT Women's Title Asuka defending against Billy Kay, Peyton Royce, and Nikki Cross from Sanity. Billy and Peyton came out together. I believe they're holding hands again. And I love Peyton Royce. I love what they're doing with Peyton and Billy. They're always having them together. I think that's great. Their characters together are better than them alone. They're a great team together. So the match starts. It, it was pretty fast. The women's title match. I wish it would have went longer. It ended probably after 10-11 minutes. I wish it would have went longer. But they ended up brawling on the outside. They went towards the announcer's table. And then uh, Billy Kay... Peyton Royce get up on the announcer's table. Nikki Cross is laid out on it. They pick up Nikki Cross. Double suplex. They throw her off the announcer's table. Through another table. That was awesome. That was a great spot. Crowd popped. Crowd loved it. So then back in the ring. Now it's Peyton and Billy double teaming Asuka. Yes. They're double teaming Asuka. I wish they would in real life and put out a video of it. I'd buy it. But that would be a different video. <laughs> that would be a video that could not be available on WWE Network. The Double Teaming of Asuka. By Peyton and Billy. Anyways. Back to the match. They're double teaming Asuka. Trying to defeat her. Trying to take her women's championship. Trying to beat her undefeated streak. Because she still hasn't been beaten. She might have been counted out once. Last year. I don't remember. But. If she was counting out, big deal. She still has never been beaten and pinned or submitted. So she's been undefeated since she debuted in October 2015. So very long time. I could see Asuka holding on to the women's title for two straight years. I think she could hold on to it until 2018. I'm not joking. She really could. She's that good. So Asuka fights out of the double team and ends up pinning and defeating Peyton Royce. So Asuka wins. I wrote a couple notes down about this match. I believe. Uh, yeah, I said all my notes already about the women's fatal four-way. Asuka wins, retains the NXT Women's Championship. She's still undefeated and she's still the women's champion. And I'm happy with that. I predicted Asuka would win and she did. And she retained. Now the main event. Bobby Roode, the glorious one. Challenging Nakamura for the NXT Championship. The crowd was hype. Especially for the entrances. 
especially for Nakamura's entrance. He got a huge reaction, huge pop from the crowd in San Antonio. Bobby Roode comes out. His glorious entrance is he's with eight women. It really reminded me of Ric Flair in the late 80s when he'd come to the ring with like eight or 12 women. It reminded me of a Nature Boy Ric Flair styling and profiling entrance. Bobby Roode had his robe on. He turned around and said, Glorious. The fans are singing his theme song. It was a glorious, awesome entrance. And as I said, Bobby Roode's accompanied by eight women. That was cool. It was a cool entrance. Then Nakamura comes out. And his entrance is also damn glorious and epic. Nakamura comes out, he's on a flying, or he's on, he's standing on top of a board, or a table, and it's basically floating to the ring, I don't know, I don't think guys were holding it, I don't know what it was on, it must have been on something with wheels that was moving. So Nakamura's on a board that's flying in the air, he's standing on it, and there's strobe lights on the board, it was an awesome entrance crowd was really excited to see Nakamura as I said the guy got the pop of the night and then in the ring before the bell rings crowd is hyped they're chanting NXT 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 then the bell rings and the crowd is chant singing Nakamura's theme humming it singing it whatever you want to call it they were doing it and then they start chanting this is glorious this is glorious that was awesome chance. So then the match starts. And it was pretty good. Then Nakamura on the outside on the ring apron hits a running knee of Bobby Roode. He falls off the apron and falls to the ground. To the outside I believe Nakamura landed on his uh, left knee. Then he's holding his left knee immediately. He's holding his left knee like he injured it badly. Like he can't get up. This scared me. I was afraid he had an ACL or MCL tear. That scared me because he kept holding his knee. He was acting like he couldn't even stand. But he ends up getting back in the ring. And before that, Bobby Roode was really working over Nakamura's neck. And his back and his neck area because he took a fall. I believe off the ring apron, Nakamura took a nasty, bad-looking fall. And he hit the ring stairs. That did not look pretty. That was bad. It was a bad fall. So then most of the match, as I said, Bobby Roode worked over his neck with knee drops on the front of his neck and then the back of his neck. And then Bobby Roode tried to steal a victory by being by uh, basically cheating like a, the heel should do. He rolled up Nakamura, put his both his legs on the second rope, one, Two, he would have won, but the ref stopped the count because the ref caught him. So then, we had, again, and Nakamura went to the outside of the ring, and a trainer, WWE's doctor trainer, actually came down to the ring and was checking on Nakamura. They would not let him enter the ring. Uh, this sucked. And Nakamura looked like he really wanted to get back in the ring. The doctor is checking on his knee, I guess. I believe Nakamura was selling. Selling the knee injury very well. I just, if the guy really had a torn ACL or MCL, I don't think the doctor would let him go back in the ring. And I, I just think Nakamura was selling very good. So Nakamura ends up going back in the ring, and then he gets, um, what was that? Hell yeah, then after he goes back in the ring, Bobby Roode locks on a half crab. First, yeah, he locked on a half crab, Nakamura would not tap out, Nakamura got out of it. Then he tried a sunset flip, which was kind of botched, but that's okay. And then Bobby Roode hit a... Glorious bomb where he lifts him up, DDTs him, but Nakamura actually kicked out of that. He kicked out of that, I couldn't believe it. I think that was right after Nakamura went back into the ring, he was hit with a glorious bomb, but he kicked out, I couldn't believe it. I was, I screamed, I was excited as hell. And I wanted Bobby Roode to win because I predicted he would. So then, 
Nakamura kicks out of the glorious bomb. I couldn't believe that. And I was really into the match. I really got into the match. And it was a great title match. It had emotion. It was awesome. So after he hits a glorious bomb, Nakamura kicks out. Then he locks on the half crab. Locks it on. Nakamura won't tap. Tried to do a sunset flip. But that was kind of botched. And then he tries, I believe at one point, Nakamura did hit his running knee. After the sunset flip was botched, he did hit a running knee. But I think Babaru kicked out. And then he picks up Nakamura, hits a glorious bomb. Or it was probably after the sunset flip botched that he hit another glorious bomb DDT. And then one, two, three. Bobby Roode wins, and it was glorious. Bobby Roode is a new NXT champion. I am so happy for him. The guy deserves it. The guy deserves to be a main eventer. Deserves to be champion. Uh, Nakamura also deserved it. Of course he deserved it. He busted his ass in New Japan for years. Nakamura is so over. I mean, Bobby Roode's not an NXT champion. Will we get a rematch at TakeOver Orlando? Before WrestleMania, we could get a Nakamura-Bobby Roode rematch for the title. Maybe it could be a submission match or an Iron Man match. I don't know. But Bobby Roode's a new champion, so he'll go on to main event the next TakeOver, I'm sure. And where does Nakamura go from here? Does he go to the Royal Rumble match? And make his main roster debut. I don't think so. I do believe he's just selling his knee injury. But I don't see Nakamura going into the Rumble match. After the beating he took tonight. I just don't see that happening. If they don't have Nakamura in the Rumble. I hope Finn Ballard appears in it. To give the fans a great surprise. Or Kurt Angle. If no Ballard or Kurt Angle, then hopefully Samoa Joe. And if not Joe, then hopefully Nakamura or Ty Dillinger or Bobby Roode or somebody. So this ends my NXT TakeOver San Antonio review. The best matches were the main event was first. Nakamura, Bobby Roode, that was the best match of the night. Had great emotion. It was awesome. Second best match was the tag titles. Third best was the women's fatal four-way. Then after that, I would say uh, Roderick Strong, Amis was a fourth best match. And the fifth best match was Ty Dillinger, Eric Young. I give NXT TakeOver San Antonio a grade of B. It was a very good event. The main event was A+. Hope you enjoyed this NXT TakeOver San Antonio review. Tomorrow's the Royal Rumble 2017. I can't wait for it. I'll do a review on it and a live reaction to the Rumble match video on it. Bye for now everybody. Follow me on Twitter at WWE NXT Guy. Also follow me at NXT WWE Guy. Very good TakeOver. I really enjoyed it. And subscribe, like, share, and comment on my videos. I would appreciate it. Bye for now, everybody.